everyone, I hope you're doing great. So it's been a while since I've had a hunting video on. I certainly haven't been shooting a lot of deer during the summer. I've pretty much had it off just to relax, do a few jobs at home and uh, do some good for the wife. But I need to get back to shooting deer. There's obviously trees that need a bit of protection. I've got cull targets to hit, so I better get to it. So stay with me folks, let's go get something. So I've got myself tucked into a nice little spot here. It's quite windy. Uh, but I'm looking over a nice little uh, restocked area. Uh, it's about three year old material, so it's got a little bit going, but it's still vulnerable to deer damage, especially at this time of year when food's starting to thin out a little bit. So we've got quite a few roe deer knocking about, and we're right at the end of the buck season. So I've only got a couple of days left of bucks, and then we're into does. Now the good news is on here, I have actually got out of season authority, so if we do come across a buck, even out of season, we can shoot them if we need to. But anything that comes out onto any of the restockings or any of the pre-thicket, it's in real trouble. Uh, forestry like this, it's really, if you see it, you need to take care of it. You're never going to lower the deer numbers to such a level as there's just nothing there. Okay? Uh, even if you shoot the deer really hard, you know, you're there every day, there's still going to be a few scattered about. And with roe deer, roe deer give birth to twins generally. So a population on a local level can rebound really, really quickly if you're not taking care of them. So uh, you might think I'm being harsh by shooting uh, deer at a season, but the reality of forestry management is that's what we do. If it's a bit of farm and you know it's a, it's a sort of stock farm, there's not a lot of pressure on crops and stuff, then great, leave your deer. But uh, when it comes to forestry protection, you know, deer down's a good thing. So bear that in mind, please. But I haven't seen anything yet. Better hurry up. <laughs> now there is a little deer popped into there. Uh, I don't know if it's a buck or a doe, there's a little hollow right down the middle of that sort of yellow strip and uh, it just appeared out of nowhere, it's disappeared again so I'm going to have to keep my eyes open and uh, see if it pops up but that's what we're looking for so I'm just going to have to wait it out and see what happens Well I think I've had about enough on here I haven't seen that deer again and I've not seen any others it's, uh, it's about half an hour later it's starting to darken a little bit, a little bit of rain came in, it's still windy. I think I need to go look somewhere else. But uh, that's the name of the game. If you check out all your little areas, all your little hollows and valleys and bankings and wherever else, there's a good chance you're going to bump into a deer that's come out for a feed. So I think that's going to be my game plan for the next hour or so of light I've got left. Oh, sure to have shot something on here tonight, but anyways, you've got to try, haven't you? Oh, well, this is good. So just behind me, just behind those rocks. Uh, I was just popping up over the banking to take a, a little look elsewhere. There's actually a deer, it must have only been about 7 8 meters behind me. So where I was looking out, the wind was kind of blowing across me down towards the boundary. This deer's come out right behind me. Not bad. That's a good start. Well, I can't complain, that's not too bad. Um, you can see the rocks just behind me over there, and uh, the, 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 the this trap. 
probably only about 60 odd meters uh, from where it got shot so that's quite nice nice easy shot to get back into things but it went straight down i deliberately shot it kind of uh, quite a bit forward and uh, a little high just to take off its feet because i'm only shooting with my uh, 223 today so it is lead ammo it's not lead free so you'd expect a good bit of expansion there good delivery of energy and it went straight down so i can't complain and it is just beside the track so uh as far as big drag outs and trees go, it's not an awful one, so let's just find it. Cass, look at it. Look at it. Let her find it. Where is it? Look at it. Look at it. I think it's in here somewhere. I'm not far. Oh, slippy back in. Good girl, where is it? Ah, she's got it there. It's a little bit further up the banking than I thought, but still, doggy's got it. So here's our little deer, and it's all good. It's not a monster by any by any means, just a nice little buck. Quite happy with that. But you can see there, it's pretty much fell on the spot. Some really nice pinky stuff, so it's taking the top of the lungs, and you can see here the exit just behind the shoulder. Nicey nice. It was shot a bit further forward of that. But yeah, I'm happy with that. That's quite nice. So, can't complain so far. The only thing is now, how do you growl at these things again? It's been a while. I better give it a go. Get it somewhere flat's always a good start. The flat, they're easy to work with, apparently. Because it's nice and fresh, I'm not going to worry too much about the esophagus because green won't leak back when they're nice and fresh. But if it's been dead for maybe 20, 30 minutes, then yeah, get yourself, get yourself tying it off. But uh, no, nah, it's all right. Oh, good. Feels a bit fatty, this one, so can't complain. And again, people talk about the rectum a lot. If it's a nice, fresh deer, create some space, move all the pellets and then tie it off. Uh, you find the fat creates a nice seal and if you've moved all the pellets away from where, you know, obviously where it can leak back, you're not going to get pellets dropping back in the cavity. So, yeah, it's easy enough done. With a diaphragm, don't worry too much about trimming it all the way around with the knife. You can rip it on road here and if you can't, just give it a little pinch of the knife and it'll come. But, uh, yeah, plenty of blood in the chest. You'll see that in a moment, but nice and fatty this one. Really good condition. Oh, kidney for the dog gone then. Let's see what blood comes out of this thing. It is pretty full to be fair. Uh, wasn't gonna go far anyways. Nice little clot in there, I think. Get out of the way, dog. There we go. And leave it somewhere where it's heads downhill and have a look at your growlic. Now there's a lot of bits to check on your growlic if you haven't done it. But you've obviously got the big rumen sac and a big flat membrane with lots of pudding and bits. So on here, if there's no massive lumps and yellow and gunk, that's all good. Always check over your organs. You can check the glands if you want, but if there's nothing like a golf ball full of pus, it's generally pretty good. So I'm happy enough with that. Time to get it back to that road. Oh well, I think I'll call it quits for today. There's rain coming in. We've got a deer, we've done okay. So, I hope you enjoyed yourself folks and I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Cheers all.